from the outset of this debate and the passage of the bill through Parliament, let me say that I recognise the intentions of the Scottish Government to look at be how best we can support tenants during the cost of living crisis. And from the unprecedented help for energy bills being provided by the UK Government, people across Scotland are rightly looking at both of Scotland's governments for support to assist individuals and families through this difficult period. However, this bill will do little to increase the incomes of most social housing and private tenants. Instead, it will threaten both the Scottish Government's ambitions on affordable house building and climate change, as well as the actual ability of housing associations and private landlords to provide their tenants with exactly the type of targeted support that is required during these difficult times. Now, we on these benches would have welcomed the opportunity to actually discuss workable policies with the Scottish Government, a 15-minute meeting with the Minister after the bill was published, and the emergency use of this legislation to railroad the bill through Parliament has not presented that opportunity. Yeah. And I, I think for most people in the sector, uh, they do find that um, will have a negative impact on what going forward. Private and social landlords should have been brought round the table to discuss policies around rent stabilisation, for example, and the further use and development of the Tenants' Charter. Instead, they have been left in the dark and now face an uncertain future with the significant unintended consequences this bill presents. Presiding Officer, the... Yes, yeah. Minister. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure the member will appreciate that while many landlords would not have behaved in this way, there would be a great number who, if the information had come out that we were intending to do this and consulted on it, uh, would have gone for an immediate rent increase as much as they could get away with. Surely he is aware of his constituents seeking 10, 20, 30, 40 percent rent increases. We should not have decided to do this in a way which have exacerbated that problem. Miles Briggs. Oh, I'm not sure the Minister understands his own bill because it's backdated to September exactly. and the extensions which he's outlined mean that this will be going forward with two, ex two uh, up to 18 months that has now been outlined. So I think the Minister probably uh, needs to rethink that because the Scottish housing market is complex, especially here in the capital. We all rely on, mixed housing, on the mixed housing market to provide the homes Scotland needs now and in the future. So this decision by SNP Green Ministers has been made without any consultation with the sector and will have consequences. In Scotland, we have never had government rent controls in the social sector. Housing associations are rightly independent organisations and have been able to set rents each year, taking into account tenant feedback, affordability and resources required to invest in maintaining properties and buildings um, and building the much needed homes, uh, which the government have also failed to achieve. The impact of this bill is therefore worrying as it goes against the historical position and brings in the real possibility of wider rent controls for the sector, shattering the confidence in the sector to take forward investment in new affordable home building, building programmes, as well as the very real prospect now of private landlords removing private rented properties from the market in the coming years. For housing associations and for private landlords, this bill now presents a real risk of hundreds of millions of pounds of lost income, and they need to rewrite their future business plans, scrapping investment in new affordable home builds, not to mention undermining of budgets in relation to energy efficiency and decarbonisation for net zero. Both key government targets, specifically the responsibility of the minister, which will be impacted. Now, this bill has already had significant impact on the potential delivery of new homes in Scotland and is going to be much harder for housing associations to plan ahead if they're able to do that now. Lenders may be nervous around lending or lend at higher margins as confidence over future rental income introduces a risk that has not been there in Scotland. Historically, we've had lower rents in Scotland. This bill will undoubtedly, therefore, trigger a slowdown in the building and construction of affordable homes in Scotland and could trigger a wider downturn in the construction industry at the very worst possible time for our economy. Presiding officer, just a few short months ago. Yes, happy to. Cabinet Secretary. I think that the uh, rise in interest rates um, that is a direct uh, cause or eff effect of the mini budget of his government um, that has sent mortgage rates spiralling, do you think that that might have an impact on landlords of all? Uh, social and the private rented sector and indeed their investment plans. Does he think that might have had an impact? 
on their business most, plans going forward. Most Briggs and yeah, give I, you the time I think back. the minister needs to look at inflation across the eurozone, but more specifically as well, looking at where no, but looking just just a few short months ago, both the ministers sitting here. I can't Mr. Hear. Briggs, if you could resume your seat a second. Um, We've got a bit of time in hand, um, so anybody who wants to make an intervention uh, should stand up and ask to make an intervention rather than holler it across the chamber. Uh, Miles Briggs, give you the time back. The President Officer, and of course, just a few short months ago, SNP and Green Ministers, in fact, the two ministers sitting on the front bench, were describing Labour's proposals around rent-free schemes as unworkable and that they would heighten the risk of eviction for tenants. Exactly. Right. Now, your bill, yeah. your bill will include opportunities which will be also leading to that, and I think that's where ministers need to be clear, because let's look at Ireland, where a similar, a similar policy has resulted in a 30% increase in homelessness. We've already seen, and do see here in, in Scotland and in Edinburgh, a record number of people living in temporary accommodation in Scotland. This bill has the potential to supercharge the housing crisis in Scotland, with fewer private tenancies being made available, fewer new affordable homes being built, and the ripping up of the very tenants' rights framework, which we here ministers want to see protect tenants. For example, the circumventing of local authority rent setting processes will not, over, not only override the statutory responsibilities of elected members, but also local processes currently in place for tenants to actually have a constructive opportunity to have their say and input into rent setting and negotiations. Design officer, there's a real and growing concern in the Scottish housing sector around unintended consequences of the bill, and I hope the Minister heard that at committee this morning. We're already seeing the impacts on students, as has been outlined by members with both Glasgow and Stirling universities telling students not to matriculate unless they have secured accommodation. One of the key aspects is unintended consequences. Fewer rented, private rented properties... Cabinet Secretary. How can Miles Briggs try to link the issues in student accommodation which happened last year and the year before with this bill when this, no one knew anything about this bill at the time? It has absolutely nothing to do with it. Miles, and it's absolutely ridiculous that you would try and link the two. Miles Briggs. I think the key point is your, this bill will make the situation worse, yeah, Cabinet exactly. Secretary. You and your government have presided over 15 years of this housing crisis, and this will supercharge it now. And in the years, years to come, the situation can only get worse for students if there are fewer private rented properties available, and that is clearly going to be the impact of this bill. Signing officer, it's clear that what we have seen already from this SNP Green government is, is likely to use its majority in Parliament to push this legislation through without listening to genuine concerns or accepting amendments. Scottish Conservatives will look to bring common sense and safeguards to this bill and ask for actually key sectors such as the social and charitable housing associations for their concerns to be put within this bill because that is vitally important. We also want to see additional resources for tribunals who will now be tasked with this extra work. And also what is key to this going forward, and the Minister didn't really outline this in any detail, is incorporation of robust planning and monitoring of the potential negative impacts of this bill. That is going to be critical. It is also not clear how long ministers actually intend to freeze rents or keep in place rent controls beyond what the First Minister described as the March 31st date. Therefore, we need to see uh, that time limitation put in place. What mitigation measures are also going to be provided for social and private landlords? To conclude, presiding officer, the process which this bill has been introduced under has been unacceptable and flawed and also looked to bypass any real in-depth scrutiny that Parliament could bring to it and the very organisations it will impact not being able to also uh, be part of this conversation. SNP Green and Labour MSPs are about to use Scotland as a guinea pig and undermine the foundations of Scotland's housing market. Signing officer, international rent control schemes demonstrate the negative impact which rent controls can have and indeed the long-term negative consequences this will have on our Scottish mixed housing market. We know how this will end. Fewer private lets, a slump in building of affordable homes, increased rents for future tenants and students unable to secure vital accommodation to go and study at university. SNP Green and Labour MSPs will be directly to blame for this significant damage done to our housing sector. The greater housing crisis which will come from this will be at their desks. And I hope that they will also make sure that the people of Scotland hold them accountable for their actions.